I bet you've heard the term pre-existing condition more in the past couple months than ever before. With the COVID-19 pandemic just ravaging the world, we've heard over and over again about people with pre-existing conditions and people without pre-existing conditions, as if there's a clear line between them. But how do you define pre-existing condition? Even better, how do you define healthy and how do you know which group you're in? I'm Dr. Brett Schur, the medical director at dietdoctor.com, and I want to bring your attention to a new post I just wrote and posted on dietdoctor.com about a study from the NHANES group. So the NHANES um, is is a huge population-based study where they just follow a number of thousands of people over time. It's been going on since 1999, and you can crunch the data that you collect and see what correlates with what. So it's not a study to prove cause and effect, but it's an observational study to suggest a associations that may uh, require further follow-up or may may be able to um, impact how we go about defining things. So in this case, what they did was they took people in that study who were healthy and they defined healthy by no diabetes or pre-diabetes. And they looked at those who had a blood test called in HOMA IR, H-O-M-A-I-R. And basically what this is, it's an equation that uses fasting insulin and fasting glucose and with a con- conversion factor and looks at your degree of insulin resistance or degree of insulin sensitivity, depending on how you look at it. And what they found is even those people who are determined to be healthy, an increasing HOMA IR was correlated with worsening health outcomes. It was also significantly correlated with obesity and with triglyceride to HDL ratios and basically the components of the metabolic syndrome, also such as um, high blood pressure and waist circumference. So although this doesn't prove one or the other, what it suggests is that the way we define healthy is very short-sighted because remember, these were all people who were determined to be healthy. But instead, what it suggests is we need to redefine that. Whether it's healthy or pre-existing condition, we have to include insulin resistance as part of that discussion. And a HOMA IR is a great way to measure insulin resistance. Because as we've written before on our website, studies have shown, these COVID-19 studies have shown people, of course, with type 2 diabetes have increased risk. But also people with high blood sugar, even without type 2 diabetes, have increased risk. And people with obesity without diabetes have increased risk. Those are likely measuring the underlying uh, insulin resistance and metabolic dysfunction that just weren't, weren't actually measured for, but it's likely reflecting that. That's, that's what I, my guess is. And studies like this show that even more, that it's not a black or white, you're healthy or you're not, but there's this, there's this continuum and insulin resistance is a big definition of that continuum. So Uh, At dietdoctor.com, we have more detailed evidence-based guides on what is insulin resistance, and more importantly, what can you do about it to improve your health, to make sure you are truly healthy, and to make sure you can truly fit into that condition, that category of no pre-existing conditions, including insulin resistance. So please take use of those resources to help make low carb simple for you, to help you better transform your health and lower your risk of any complications now and in the future. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. Take care and be well. 